What's up everybody? Today we're going to be talking about pricing and pricing in today's market is at least 30% of the entire marketing strategy. Pricing your home properly can mean the difference between a multiple offer situation and no offer at all. So let's break it down. Number one, we're going to start with the micro. Look at the recent homes sold in your neighborhood. Now we want to look at the past three months, potentially the past six months. If you have a completely unique property, that is not what we're talking about. Totally different conversation. So when looking at homes sold in your neighborhood, you want to look at the size of the home, the location of the home and the upgrades. So we want a comparable size. If you're looking at a planned unit development, you may have similar floor plans. You need to look at that same floor plan and see what has sold in that same floor plan. Even if you have the same floor plan, you may have a completely unique location. Is the lot bigger? Is it smaller? Is it closer to the front? Does it have a view in the back of a pond or is it wooded? Is the lot fenced? Is it not fenced? Is it flat? Is it sloped? You have to look at all of these factors and what may be important to a buyer. And then you wanna look at upgrades in the home, right? So kitchens, bathrooms, you know, do you have the luxury kitchen option? Do you have something that is more a basic kitchen? Do you have carpet versus luxury vinyl plank versus potentially hardwood? All of these factors matter in the pricing. Next, we're going to look at under contract homes. This is your best gauge of where you need to price your home. And we're going to expand the search a little bit, right? We're going from macro, we're growing a little bit because the under contract homes in the entire area are part of your pricing strategy. You can assume that if the home was sold quickly, that it's going to be at or above list price in our current market. If it's been sitting on the market, it's going to be slightly below list price. Use these homes as a gauge to say, where should I be pricing my home based on that home that is under contract? That square footage, that current upgrade, that lot location and lot size, right? Lastly, we're gonna look and think like a buyer. So when a buyer goes to buy a home, they go get a mortgage and they get a giant credit card, right? And they say, okay, what can I do with my money? And the first question they ask is, what's important to me? So the first thing you're gonna look at is what is the unique selling proposition of the home that is being sold? Is it the school district? Is it the amazing amenities? Is the fact that it has five bedrooms and that's very rare in the market? Is the fact that it's single story? Is it the fact that it has a pool, right? That's the buyer you're gonna be targeting. And then you're gonna look in a very broad area of where can you find that specific home? And you might hit a few key areas or a few key points, right? Does it have a pool? So you look at all of the homes that have pools. You look at all of the homes that are in a specific school district or all of the homes that may have five bedrooms, whatever you think that unique selling proposition is. And then when you look at those active homes that are in comparison to the home that you have on the market, you then think, hmm, okay, if I were a buyer and I had a giant credit card which home would I buy for what price? The goal is to be the best value on the market, not the lowest price, but the best value. For example, let's say you have mac daddied your kitchen out. Your home is absolutely gorgeous, right? People are gonna pay more for that than they would say for a home that needs the same square footage, same number of bedrooms and bathrooms that needs to be updated. So it's okay if your home is priced higher yet it needs to be priced at the best possible price for a home that has those same upgrades, that same square footage, similar location, that type of thing. So here's the bottom line. You're gonna go from micro to macro in pricing your home. You're gonna look at the local neighborhood first, what has sold, then you're gonna to go to what I call the chosen ones in a broader area. Those are the homes that are under contract and you're gonna look for similar properties. And then you're gonna to go to what's active on the market. What is your competition? When buyers are shopping, what are they comparing your home to? So here are a couple pitfalls. 
Number one, when you're looking at those active properties on the market, a lot of people think, oh, everybody wants to be in this particular neighborhood or everybody wants to be in this particular area. Well, no, they don't. So you have to be smarter than the average bear. You have to say, okay, if I wanted the most amazing school district, these are the three, four, or five areas of all of Charleston that I could potentially look at. If I wanted a home that was single story, right, that had quick access to the highway, where would that home be? So you've got to be smart. The second pitfall when pricing your home is assuming that you can price it high and you have time to drop the price. See, when houses are on the market first, they're juicy, they're hot, it's the new arrival, it's the coolest thing that's out there, right? And you have to capture all of that demand that has been sitting there waiting for the next home to hit the market, right? You don't wanna be the home that's been sitting on the market because it's less valuable. Why? Because nobody's wanted it yet, right? Something is always more valuable when lots of people want it or you can't have it. That's the scarcity concept, right? That's why people say, oh, limited time sale and first come first serve and all this other stuff, right? They wanna create a feeling of scarcity. People want what they can't have. So you want to make sure that your home is priced right from the get-go, so you capture the most buyers, you're going to get the highest possible price. Let's say, for example, you list your home for a million dollars, and you don't get any offers for three weeks. What is the likelihood that a buyer is going to come in and offer you a million dollars? If the home should have been priced at $950,000, and you price it at $950,000, and you get four or five or six people that are coming in and giving in, you an offer, you could potentially get more than $950,000. So the third pitfall in pricing your home is relying on the Zestimate. So Zillow has an algorithm that they use to price homes. And although this is an important thing to have in your mind, right, because buyers are looking at the Zestimate. I don't care if you're a real estate agent or your homeowner pricing your home, every single potential buyer is looking at the Zestimate, right? But that Zestimate does not take into account all of the things that a great real estate agent knows. So relying on that Zestimate or allowing that to be your guide could be a major pitfall in pricing your home. So if you need a great agent to help you price your home, get you top dollar for your home, Give me a call. My number's in the end of this video. Look forward to helping you out.